10 years after the wishes, the ideals that we were fighting for are still alive. And to me, that's the most important thing here this week. We're seeing so much ex excitement. 1,600 delegates coming and looking at the preparatory process, over 500 input documents in the most multi-stakeholder model ever seen before. Therefore, I'm very much uh, excited about this. This is a moment for us at ITU to continue to show our ability to build the bridges. How you see information and communication technology as an input for the post-2015 development agenda is a key element here that we are looking at. ITU has shown over the 150 years of its existence its ability to adapt itself to new technologies and new environments. And that's exactly what it's doing now. Back in 1998, we're saying we're doing this alone. We are entering the information society. And today, we are in the information society. We're moving toward the next step, the knowledge society, where everyone needs only not only access to information, but to use information, to create information and share information. Those are the four foundations that we're trying to build here together in the wishes process. My dream is to have all stakeholders come together at last and work in a collaborative manner. We've already started that. I'm encouraged by that. I am very much confident that uh, uh, we are at the stage where everyone understands first the importance of information and communication technologies. Two, as a tool for, is it a tool for all the other sectors? And three, it is an industry in itself. This is why I'm advocating the ICT in the post-2015 development agenda. I believe that ICT will continue to be the, the most important tool for the humanity. Not only it's a, it's a tool for as a sector to develop, but it's, it's, a, it's an industry in itself. Two thirds of new jobs in the world are created in the ICT sector. This sector continues to have the most important role for development of humanity. Now, we need a light touch regulation in it. And that's why we're trying to work with all stakeholders so that they share information so that we don't over-regulate this industry. We need some regulation, however, but light touch regulation. That's what, that's my, what my vision is, to make sure that the industry continues to evolve as it is, has been doing so far. Since 2005, the developing countries have made a tremendous progress in the ICT. To me, it was not a surprise because I knew that they understand that their development will go through ICT. And we've seen lately, innovation coming from developing countries. Take the example of M-Pesa, the mobile payment. It was a local solution to local problems, conceived and developed in Kenya and Uganda for countries where people want to transfer little, small amounts of money, $5 or less, for which the current banking system was not fit. And I was always saying that uh, this is an industry driven by innovation. And innovation is engined by human brain. It's the only natural resource that is equally distributed everywhere. No nation, race, or culture develop or developing has more or less of that. They're all equal. And if you train those brains, they will, they will see tremendous innovation everywhere in the world. And that's what we're seeing now. This is just the beginning of it. And we're going to see more and more. I, I, actually, I can tell you that even we, the professionals in this field, none of us can imagine what's going to happen tomorrow. But all that we know is going to be beautiful. <laughs>